Um, my name is Tony Inhorn. I'm a Northwestern student um, and you know, excited to have everyone here on behalf of the Democratic Party of Evanston um, for this conversation um, about you know, climate issues and youth engagement. Um, so I've been working as the outreach director for the Evanston Democrats Climate Action Team. Um, and I'm really excited to be the moderator for this conversation um, with Representative Schakowsky. Um, so essentially what we're gonna be talking about is um, you know, talking about the work of these students. Um, we have one group of students from Evanston who have been working on um, youth engagement with uh, local elections around environmental issues. Um, and then we have another group of students. Well, when you say group, what, side, what are you talking about? How many people? Oh, so we have, we can do some introductions. Um, oh, okay. We have, if you, guys, if you want to introduce yourselves. Sure, I can go first. Um, so I'm Sarika. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm a member of the Evanston group. There's four of us. And then there's two um, high school students from Niles North. Evanston, great, okay. I'm Mia, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a senior and I'm also part of the Evanston group. Great. My name's Lily, um, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a junior at ETHS and I'm also part of the Evanston group. Great. Yeah, and we're missing Jacob Brodsky. He's also a senior with us. Um, and our group is called Evanston Youth for Environmental Activism. Evanston Youth for Environmental Action, cool. Yeah, and then we also have some students from um, Niles North. So if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Okay. Greetings. I'm Elliot Parrish. He has, I'm the president and founder of the Climate Change Club at Niles North and editor in chief of the Winds of Change Environmental Journal. Hi, I'm Abby Parrish. I'm his twin. I use she, her pronouns, and I am the vice president of the Niles North Climate Change Club. Excellent. Did you say that you're his twin? Okay, that's perfect. All right. <laughs> Amazing. So um, yeah, I was thinking that the students could give a quick overview of, you know, the work they've been doing um, on climate activism in their community. And then we could just um, spend the rest of the time, you know, having a moderated question and answer session um, to allow them to discuss with you like their work and like hear your positions on environmental issues and uh, youth engagement around those issues. So yeah. Um, Sarika, Lily, Mia, if you guys want to talk about the work you guys have been doing. Sure. So um, first off, we planned this pledge around um, implementing, stressing um, a variety of different aspects of the Climate Action Resilience Plan, but also how we must go beyond its bounds and that we can't, I mean, while it is definitely an initiative that should be applauded, we have to expand beyond it and we have to think of other motives and things that in that encompass like environmental sustainability in Evanston. Uh -huh. Great. Yeah. Okay. okay. So our motive for this was really to acknowledge some things that are missing from the climate action and resilience plan, um, especially the intersectionality of it, like equity and environmental justice. So we also wanted to show that youth really care about this issue and we wanted Evanston candidates to take specific action to preventing the climate crisis in Evanston. Did you present them with some demands? Or yes. Oh, okay. Like yeah, the so the Youth Pledge is a page long document. You can access it on Citizens Greener Evanston website. Um, and we've received tons of positive responses via our Instagram, Facebook, um, and then we reached out to the candidates themselves via email, um, along with the school board candidates for the April 6th election. Um, and so prior to this coming election, the February 23rd one, like the primaries, um, all three of our Evanston mayoral candidates had signed on and showed really great support. Um, so that was awesome. And then also 12 older people have signed it across all the wards. And I think around five school board candidates so far for District 202 and 65. Um, and I guess taking some of our takeaways from it, um, it was a Google form that we sent out and some of the older people kind of said like, you know, I really support everything that's in this, but I don't necessarily know how much like power I'll have over this. Um, and so we then had a meeting with mayor elect Daniel Biss, um, to kind of do a Q and A with him as well. And he told us that, um, a lot of the older people actually will have control and influence over some of those things. For example, 
um, like a universal access law to composting, which was um, a central part of our zero waste initiative bullet point. What, say um, that. Again. What was an essential part? What a what climate? So, so we one of our um, like overarching bullet points was zero waste initiative, um, and so beneath that was. Um, a universal access law to composting and recycling in Evanston. Um, and so, yeah, we were really grateful to have that meeting with this. Um, it helped clear things up and he definitely wants to stay engaged with youth. So those are some things that we've learned from our work so far over these past couple months. I think you're really gonna find Daniel to be a great partner here and uh, help open doors and facilitate. So I'm excited about his uh, being mayor. Yeah, go ahead. Incredible. Um, so Abigail and Elliot, if you guys want to talk a bit about the work you've been doing. Certainly. Over at Niles North and Skokie, we're working with the Climate Change Club. And one of our biggest accomplishments these past two years has been setting up a composting and recycling zero waste station in the school cafeteria. Oh, cool. And in doing so, we have reduced the landfill waste that comes out of Niles North by over an estimated 90%. Woo, fantastic. <laughs> um, another thing that our group really focuses on is kind of educating our school and our community about climate change and about the importance of, you know, doing our part to reduce the climate crisis. So that looks like a lot of different things. There's an Earth Day panel that we're planning right now. We're having speakers from various universities, from various environmental activism groups that are coming to speak for Earth Day. We also led um, a walkout two years ago as part of the global climate strike to help raise awareness and, you know, basically just get out the word about the need for climate action in our community and across the country. Mm -hmm. Right, really great. And furthermore, we've held a kind of get out the vote effort for the carbon dividend. And that came in the form of hosting Jeff Green, who presented a keynote to the school regarding the benefits of that proposal before the election this, this week. And on top of that, we publish an environmental journal for the school to keep students informed on such matters. Our other main initiative that we're in the process of working on right now is there's currently no part of the science curriculum at our school that talks about climate change. Some students take AP environmental science, but unless you take that course or unless you have a science teacher who brings it up on their own, the majority of students at our school don't have really a way to learn about the facts of climate change and the science behind it. So our group is working right now with administrators at our school and at Niles West, our partner school, to implement a curriculum, a district-wide curriculum that would make sure that all students who graduate from District 219 learn about not necessarily the political side of climate change, but just the facts behind it and the science and why it's a problem and why it's important to do our part to fix it. Perfect. Okay, good. Incredible. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been amazing working with these students and seeing how passionate they are about environmental issues and um, seeing these policies put in place. And they have a lot of questions um, for you, Representative Schakowsky. So I was thinking we could just go into um, a question and answer session and just have a discussion, um, keep it pretty informal. But um, yeah, so I guess, um, you know, if, if... Let me just tell, tell them, yeah, how sure. I, uh, you know, I introduced an amendment um, to the American Rescue Act, along with um, Ayanna Presley of Massachusetts, um, to lower the voting age to 16. Um, and it's part because of my experience of, of late with how incredibly um, involved um, young people, young people are. It didn't pass, but it got over 100 votes in the House of Representatives. Just just wanted you to know that. Anyway, go ahead, ask ask away. Okay, so I guess um, my first personal question is, how did you first get involved in politics? Um, and then more specifically, um, 
with like environmental activism or anything that has to do with that. Well, I, you know, I certainly remember the first Earth Day um, and it was actually a time when um, bills were being passed the, um, in, in, the, in the Congress that were really important. Um, but my, my, I, got into, I got into Congress a very unusual way. You know, the, the expiration dates that you see on food um, there was, uh, there were six of us women that lived out, at, we had little children in the Northwest suburbs. It started, believe it or not, in 1969. That's many, many, many years ago. Um, and there were no dates, uh, at all on, on food. So our little group, which we modestly called ourselves National Consumers United, um, started um, cracking the codes and finding all this old food in the supermarket um, and uh, came, became kind of high profile. And Jewel began advertising, um, come to Jewel, we have freshness dates on our house brands. And anyway, it all snowballed. And now, you know, you can go to the store and check out the age of the milk and set, et cetera. And now they're ubiquitous everywhere. So it was such an um, empowering experience to be, or we became share, we had one shareholder of Jewel and anyway, um, that I was hooked on if I could do this, I can change the world. Cause even though it's just dates on food, it still affects people's lives. So I didn't know then as a 20 something housewife and mom that I'd end up in, in Congress, but it was so empowering that I looked for opportunities to be an organizer on lots of different issues and eventually run, uh, run for office. Um, I still see myself really as uh, an organizer and I'm really, I'm really focused on um, your generation because um, you know, I believe that your voices are so powerful. You know, it's, it's no longer do you say to young people, what do you wanna do when you grow up? It's like, what do you wanna do now um, to, to make the world um, better? Um, I've been involved in uh, the, the kids that did the, the Juliana lawsuit. Um, if you know about that, they sued the federal government. It was uh, against the United States of America for um, violating the pledge of um, life, liberty, and uh, the pursuit of happiness because of um, the uh, climate being ignored and, and made dangerous. Um, these kids ranged from uh, one, I think in the first, when the lawsuit was first, uh, I think he was eight, maybe eight years old. I don't know. and you know, young, young kids that sued the, the government of the United States, still going on. But anyway, um, so I just, um, on, on, uh, on this issue, on climate, and I think also on gun violence, that youth are leading the way to end gun violence. Uh, and, the, and those two issues in particular, um, somewhat on immigration as well. Um, but, you know, really understanding, I think your generation really gets the um, idea of environmental justice um, and, um, you know, more, more than others. So I'm just uh, standing ready to um, help and to follow in, in, any, in any way to offer my, I think, just experience in organizing um, I, I really like the idea that no one should leave school without some education uh, about this because this, this is existential. The climate issues are existential. If we don't deal with them, it is a disaster for human life on this planet. The planet will go on. It's not, we don't have to save the planet. The planet will exist without us. Um, but human beings may not be able to. And we're already seeing climate refugees and you know, all the effects. And, and 
But I, let, let, I'll, I'll finish with, with this and then you can go on to more questions. But so we've been having hearings a lot about, um, you know, climate comes up all the time. They make fun of, the Republicans make fun of the Green New Deal, which I'm a proud sponsor of, which is really a, a picture of what we should do. It's not a bill in terms of, they, they, they talk about it as a, I don't know, multi-trillion dollar piece of legislation, but it's really important. Um, their um, view is that if, if it's going to cost any jobs in the fossil fuel industry, that it's not worth doing um, because these are high paying jobs. These are good jobs. And of course, they're all supported money-wise by the fossil fuel industry. But so there, there's definitely pushback among the leaders of this country. Thank God that Joe Biden really believes in serious work on the environment. Um, but you need to be there and your voice needs to be there. And I think it really can make a difference. So I'll, anything else you ask me, I'll be real short. And answering. Yeah, I have a question, but first I want to say, like, thank you for supporting um, climate curriculum in schools. That's something that I'm working on right now with the administration at ETHS. I also think it's really important. I didn't learn um, a lot about the climate crisis until I took AP environmental science. So it's definitely important and it's something that we need to stress. Um, I'll get on to the question. So what is your opinion of how Evanston is doing environmental wise? I know that's like a really broad question, but like, what are some specific things? Yeah, like you know what? I have to say, I don't really know compared to other uh, municipalities, in fact, how Evanston is doing. My sense is that there's, um, you know, a, a strong rec recognition, but, you know, I, I'm, um, I'm going to, have an energy audit, I hope sooner rather than later, in my house, a big old house, one of the land, landmark or whatever you call it. Yeah, I guess it's a landmark house. Very old, um, very, uh, I, I got a letter from um, NICOR that, you know, they, it showed my usage like way up. So we're gonna do something serious about that. Probably be a fortune to do that, but we're gonna do it. Um, so I don't know. Um, and if you guys know, by the way, of um, the, a really good energy audit company um, that is doing it, not just for the money, but because they you know, believe in this, um, you can let me know. I haven't arranged with anybody yet. Anyway, um, I don't know is the answer. You probably know better than I do. I mean, I think it's worth a survey though to see what kind of um, building codes there are um, so that if you have a new construction, what it looks like. Um, you know, I'm probably others um, know, know a lot more than I do, but I also know that there's a lot of uh, old houses in Evanston and um, not, not necessarily big old houses, but you know, just con old construction that probably is pretty windy in there. Um, and people may need help to actually weatherize their, uh, their homes. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Oh no, it's all good regarding a local issue turned national what is your opinion on the lincoln park now southeast side of chicago general iron shredding plant and the u.s department of housing's environmental racism investigation into that move you've heard that already it's prompted a month-long hunger strike and a no, lot of i don't know you know what I'll, I'll be honest with you. Maybe I should know, but I don't know about this. I don't know what you're talking about. It sounds really important. So what I think 
you know, if you want me to get involved in this, I'm happy to, but they're going to have to write me a little white paper on, uh, on what's going on and get it to me. Because I okay. don't. Uh, but I, tell, so just briefly, tell me what, what's happening in a hunger strike. I have no idea about that. Well, I wouldn't have asked you about it if there wasn't a federal investigation, because in Chicago, there was a general iron metal shredding plant that general, was going. Is that the name of it? General iron? Yes. Iron metal shredding plant. Okay. That was going to move to the southeast side of Chicago, which already has the worst air pollution anywhere in the city. Uh -huh. And so local activists held a month, a month long hunger strike and the US Department of Housing and Urban Development launched a civil rights investigation into the matter as the city was determining whether to um, award a permit or not. Wow, okay. Human rights investigation, um, hunger strike for how long? One month. Oh my goodness. This is, wow. Um, and well, get me something on that so I can, uh, I can know about it and see what's going on with the federal investigation. So they must have wanted to move what to the 10th ward in Chicago on the right. southeast side. Yeah, well, the alderman there is a friend of mine, Sue. Um, and uh, I can talk to her about it too. They wanted to move it from where to this temple? From Lincoln Park. It's in Lincoln Park. It's in Lincoln Park now, or it was? It closed in Lincoln Park and now it's moving. Where was it in Lincoln Park? I don't <laughs> picture something industrial. Um, a bit north of the high rises from the loop. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that makes uh, the, I mean, that's the pattern. Let's, let's go to some place where it's more low income people. Although I'll tell you, the alderman there is pretty tough. So um, I, I'll find out, you'll send me something on that, right? I will. Yes, okay. ma'am. Right. On a similar note, um, I had a question on your understanding of the intersection of racial justice and environmentalism, and then kind of a two-parter um, in terms of Evanston specifically, and it's totally understandable if um, you're not well-versed in this. Uh, what is your stance on tape coats and the waste transfer stations position in the fifth ward of Evanston, which is predominantly POC? Okay, well, you're gonna to have to tell me about that too, but the, there's a lot of talk and I'm very involved in those and I'm on the energy subcommittee and um, the, the uh, environmental subcommittee as part, it's a subcommittee of the energy and commerce committee that I'm on. Um, but um, there's a, finally, I think, um, so much more awareness about racial justice in general, but certainly also the question of environmental justice and the um, acknowledgement now that uh, low income and uh, communities of color have been um, so um, hurt by um, having the majority of the environmental problems in their communities. Um, and so that's a, an awakening and a reckoning that's happening right now on these questions. In terms of, uh, of Evanston, I really, I don't know. So tell me about what you're talking about. There's some sort so, of, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure Sarka and Nia also know a lot about this, but tape coat is um, an adhesive company that was stationed in the Fifth Ward of Evanston, which again, predominantly POC um, families. And it was spewing toxic fumes that were leading to increasing cases of like adverse health, health effects like tumors, cancer, um, respiratory oh. illnesses. Yeah, mm -hmm. oh my God. How long, how long has that been there? 
Um, I'm not sure how long Tape Coat has been there, but I know for the last few years, multiple people have called 311 saying there's a lot of um, pollution in the air. We have to sleep in our cars at night. And then I know that there was no immediate action. Um, Mayor-elect Daniel Biss did not know about Tape Coat, but I sent him the drive. So um, he now knows about it, but it was a very serious issue and it took a while for it to be acknowledged by the city. Hey, tape Co, how do you spell that? It's Tape Coat. So T-A-P-E-C-O-A-T. Oh. Okay, I see. And it's in the fifth floor. Um, and it uh, emits pollutants of some sort. Oh, okay. Yes, huh. and it, I think it was confirmed that they were emitting carcinogens. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Who, who, do you know who the leaders of that are? Have you been in touch with those people on the, from the fifth ward? Um, I know it's a group of people. I'm not sure on the names of the leaders, but like I'm on their Google Drive, so I'm sure I can find their contacts. I mean, I think it's important if, you know, this is an issue they want to get involved in that you get involved with the leaders of the community. And I'm sure that they will um, welcome them. They're the leaders, but you know you could um, add really important voice to uh, to their efforts. Definitely. I mean, if the city, if the city's been unresponsive, there's no excuse for that. And there's mm -hmm. going to be very soon a a, a new um, city council, um, and uh, you know there's going to be some pretty big changes. And then, then, of course, there's Daniel, who I think can be very helpful on these questions. Definitely, yeah. I agree with everything you said. And it's terrible because, you know, so many people just in Evanston didn't even know about it and still don't know about it. Um, it doesn't seem like very, like, widely, like, known about or advertised. So, yeah, it's just terrible. There's a lot of, you know, hidden inequity, too, along with this explicit. Um, but my next question was, how would you suggest that um, youth stay involved in this in this um, like important work? Well, it looks like you've identified very concrete, close to home issues that um, you know you can you can play. I mean, you know, if people are actually um, being exposed to carcinogens in their community in Evanston, wow. I mean, that's explosive. And, um, you know, so you might want um, to consider, um, you want, I, I want to say this, you want to respect the leaders who are already part of this. So when you're meeting with them or going to them, it's, you want to amplify what they're doing. In other words, it would be bad to just kind of march in and say, okay, you know, and then take over or try to in any way. I mean, I know you wouldn't do that, but I, I think that you can be a very important part of a strategy. Now at city council, there is a time for public statements to be made at the beginning of, of hearings. You live in other wards where you can put some pressure on the, you know, if there's, if the city somehow is not responsive and your alderman has not been responsive, you can make a change there. You could engage um, the students, you know, maybe some sort uh, of a petition or um, signing on to a, a, a letter or, helping to introduce a, a resolution in the city council. I mean, there's a lot to do. I mean, you could win something like this. Um, and um, I think, you know, I think your help would be critical here. So that's, that's what I would suggest in terms of involvement. And you know what? And the thing is, victories when you're an organizer are so important. Um, and even the fight, the fight is so important. Um, and, it, and, and because it's so tangible, 
and it's so near. I think it could really be exciting. And I think um, the Niles people, you know, folks could get involved too. It sounds like it's probably not even that far from, um, you know, who knows who else is getting poisoned by this stuff. What is the plan? Is there a plan? Has the group made a plan on what they want to do about this uh, emission, these emissions? Um, I know that they are organizing and collecting data um, about the factory and then the pollution in the air and also residents of the fifth ward, their experience with tape coat. Um, I'm not sure on their solid concrete plan. I have not been in contact with them for a little bit. Um, but I know that they're getting a lot of work done. I think COVID stopped them um, from continuing to pursue getting rid of tape coat or reducing tape coat's emissions. Um, I don't have, sorry, but I don't have like an update right now. Well, so many, I think, I think this is, I'm excited about it. I mean, I think this could be great. And the other thing is you're probably more tech savvy than a lot of people there. You could do, um, you know, put together the, uh, fact sheets with charts or, or whatever, you know, because you know how to do that. Um, and I'm not saying they don't have expertise either, but I think that um, you have a special, you being the young people um, who speak tech as a first language. Um, I think, you know, you could be very, you could be very helpful. You could help with research and, um, you know, that kind of thing. It could maybe be um, a school project that you get even credit for. I guess that's a, more of a college thing you get credit for. But still, um, I, I think this is, this sounds pretty huge to me. Incredible. Um, any, any further questions? Um, I, yes, I do have one. So, the April 6 elections are coming up and we just wanted to ask how can we maximize environmental activism before and after those elections on April 6th? Well, I mean, you want to know know your alderman. Sounds like you know your mayor who's going to be the mayor. Um, you know, develop a develop a, a relationship. I think in each of the um, the wards and and certainly um, if it's Niles, I'm, I guess we're talking about Skokie and another um, different Niles Township and other municipalities. Same thing. Get to know your um, elected elected leaders. Um, present your um, your views, and the more specific. I mean that that's the beauty really of local government. You know, we're talking about the nitty gritty here. Things that are actually really doable in the in the in the community um, and um, so I, I think that's the big thing in terms of um, if there's anything you can do about helping get out the vote and again I would suggest you know there's a um, turnout disparity in Evanston and I'll be honest with you, the sixth and seventh, seventh wards turn out pretty well. And um, communities that are more um, uh, mixed race, lower income, people of color, less. That's just how it is. We have to work on that. And it works. Look what happened in Georgia and Stacey Abrams, perhaps the greatest organizer I've ever come across. Um, you know, they, they won two, two US Senate seats by engaging a community that of course now they passed um, voter suppression laws, but I'm telling you, they're gonna get around them and then eventually get rid of them. Um, so, um, you know, think about encouraging more turnout in the fifth ward, the second ward, um, and, you know, making people understand um, the importance. Certainly all the people around this uh, tape, co tape coat ought to be out voting. Um, and so it's really, 
turnout, 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 I think. Um, getting people to participate in the local election, knowing what the stakes are. Uh, Abigail yeah. and Elliot, if you guys have another question. Yeah, so um, one thing that we've noticed kind of throughout all of the work that we've done, whether it's with composting or now with our curriculum proposal, is one of the hardest parts of this is actually getting the conversation started and getting people to talk about climate issues. Because a lot of people, you know, because it's become very politicized, people are kind of afraid to maybe take a stance or be open about, you know, the importance of it. And so we were just wondering if you had any advice for how to really get the community as a whole to talk about it more and to take action more. Well, I think the um, superintendents of um, both the high school and um, uh, so 202 and um, what's, what are the districts? 219. Uh, 219 is our district, yeah. I, yeah. Anyway, um, I, I think getting um, the superintendents, getting um, talking with them and meeting with them and, and making, making the point is very, very, is very important. You know, letters to the um, editor are um, very useful. People read, you know, and look at those. Um, I think um, having, you know, as many stakeholders as possible, um, the head of the teachers union um, out there, you know, talk, talking to those people and seeing if you can get the, the union involved in, uh, in, in, in these issues, the, the faculty involved in these, uh, in these issues is, uh, is really, really important. You know, and getting, you said getting the ball rolling. If you can get one of the um, aldermen or trustees or whatever to introduce a resolution that you guys perhaps draft um, for whatever the local body is to, uh, to vote on, um, they get the, uh, they may get the ball, the ball rolling. And then of course you want to recruit more and more people to, um, to be part of your uh, clubs and organizations. Um, and uh, you're, are you all back in school? Not yeah. no, we're, we're remote. You're still remote. Yeah. Some people at our school are opting in to do hybrid learning, but we're still at home. Oh, uh, you know, I mean that, you know, all this makes it makes it harder. Um, but again, you know, the technology um, isn't, you know, get more pe people on uh, to Zoom with you um, and uh, have a speaker maybe, or you be a speaker um, and uh, just add to your add to your numbers. And in terms of it, that it's too political, this is your life right now. You're, I mean, literally your lives depend on whether we're gonna do enough on the, on the climate. As I said, it's existential. There aren't that many, there aren't that many issues that fall into a category like that. I think Barack Obama once said them that just objectively, the most important issue is the climate crisis. And, um, and, and so, and, and as far as political, yeah, you may have to get your hands dirty a little bit in politics because there are people, the uh, opponents that, uh, you know, are gonna, are gonna push back. That's life, that's just life. And it's inevitable when you start getting into something where like, I'm sure the tape coat people have a different view of what you're saying. And, um, you know, I'm sorry, that's it. And so if you aren't afraid to wade into, uh, in, into that, then, you know, it's not gonna happen. So, and, you know, it's exciting. It's rewarding, it's fun. It's fun, the, the fight is joyful, you know? Um, and, and I'm just so proud of you for taking it on. Um, and, and you should approach it as happy warriors too. Um, 
And I mean, people, people don't want to join. What was there? Oh, there was some famous woman who said she doesn't want to belong to any organization that doesn't dance. Um, something like that. Anyway, um, so, you know, this is, uh, this is, and the other point though, is that it doesn't take everyone to make change. Um, you know, uh, you get enough people, but the, the, the people who are just gonna sit on the sidelines are gonna sit on the sidelines. Okay, give it a try. They don't wanna help, you'll find, you'll find others who will. And it doesn't take everybody, it takes the leaders. Incredible. So I, I know Representative Schakowsky only has until 445, so maybe we have time for hopefully one more question from the Evanston and then one more question from the Niles students each. Sure. sure. Awesome. So generally speaking, uh, what can we do to hold you accountable um, environmentally? Hold me accountable? Um, well, I think, I, I mean, I already feel so much more informed. I, I mean, there are things happening literally in my backyard that I didn't even know about. Um, both this issue with the plant that they want to move to the fifth world, where I could, you know, potentially be helpful in in that. Um, and um, I didn't know about uh, tape coat at all. Um, and so one of the ways that, as someone who's already an environmentalist, um, the way you hold me accountable is to say, okay. So what are you gonna do about this? There's a federal lawsuit going on. What are you gonna do about this? People are, you know, not eating. They're on a hunger strike over something like this. Where are you? Uh, fair enough, right? So um, though that, that's what, to create the expectation that I need to help and then get me some of the tools that could help me be effective. So it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. But um, you know, I look forward to that. I mean, I, I love you for your activism. Um, and you know, happy to uh, you know, think about strategies to um, move the agenda. That's you know, you gotta think strategically when you do stuff like that. Who are the stakeholders? Who are our allies and who are our opponents here? Um, you know, do that kind of, uh, there's, there's a, I, I should get you a, um, what do we call it, this chart that, you know, is, talks about the things that you need to, need to know, but you certainly need to know who are our allies, who are our potential allies, who are our opponents, um, and then what are the actions that we need to take to um, move our agenda. I can help with that. Representative, first of all, I'd like to extend our collective gratitude and respect for joining us today and supporting our climate justice initiative. Absolutely, earlier, I'm proud to do it. Thank you. Earlier, you brought up Barack Obama who him, Bill Clinton, and Al Gore have all attempted to do a carbon tax in the past, and none of them could get it passed. During the April 6th election, there is an equitable carbon tax dividend on the ballot. What are your views on such a measure? Well, I mean, we have to raise the cost of carbon. Um, and there's just no question about it. And in fact, the oil companies, big oil, the gas has actually built into their future planning, the fact that there's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a carbon tax, um, which I am very much uh, in favor of. Now you can hear the arguments. Okay, oh, you wanna raise the cost of gasoline, the poor people can't uh, afford to do it. Oh, you wanna take away, thousands and thousands of, uh, of jobs from people, what, you know, what are they supposed to, to do? And, and we have to have answers to those, uh, to, to those questions. Um, but it's all about carbon. 
and and the reduction in the atmosphere. And so, um, you know, we're going to have to answer all those side side issues. I mean, I just want you to think about this when you talk about jobs that are are lost. You know, for decades and decades, we have paid farmers not to grow when there were surpluses. I mean, on the, in a short term, and I've never brought this up yet, I want to talk to some of my progressive caucus members. Um, you know, pe there, people that are going to lose their jobs in the oil fields are probably, uh, most of them um, are not going to go to school and, and, um, tra and job training and, or some of them anyway, older people, we should just pay them. We should just support, help support them. We do it for farmers. Why can't we do it for people that we want to um, transition out of a uh, life killing job? And you know what? I can't imagine that these coal miners are, they're not doing it out of the love of the, the job. I mean, yes, there's a culture around it. There's, quest, there's no question there, that there is. It's dirty, dangerous work. Some of these folks that have worked in the mines never really see daylight. They go down when it's dark, they come up when it's dark. Um, but it's been, a, it's been a, a good job and it's been a life. So, you know, we, we, we have to, you know, we, we talk about um, environmental justice. Well, there has to be some environmental justice for the white workers um, who, who are doing these jobs too. You know, we, we can't just condemn them for being Neanderthals and not understanding about climate. They, they need to live too and they need to feed their families. So we have a, it's, it's an enormous job that we have, have to do, but it is existential. It's about life and death. So all of it is worth doing. Incredible. Well, I think that's all the time we have for today, but um, just want to really thank you, Representative Schakowsky, for joining us. This has been an amazing conversation and a big thank you to the students for your really insightful and um, amazing questions. Um, but I'm really glad that we were all able to have this conversation. And I, I hope that this is the start of a really productive dialogue between um, you, know, you, Representative Schakowsky, and the youth of uh, these communities on these issues. Well, I, I'm happy to periodically um, do this or uh, be available when there's, um, I don't know, some sort of a turning point where questions are, 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 are asked. Um, so I, uh, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to do it. So I am expecting information about the, um, about tape code and I'm expecting information. What was, what's the other one where there was the, uh, hunger strike, um, general iron. Yeah. So somebody is going to get me information about that, right? Okay. I'm not hard to find. I'm at 1101 Ridge in Evanston. You can tell my house because it usually has political signs in front of it. Um, I'm supporting um, Daniel and um, Stephanie Mendoza for clerk. And I'm staying, I'm, I'm not in the, it, there's just too many um, uh, not all not just aldermanic, but all, lots of other races that I can't get involved in all of them. But um, anyway, I'm easy to find. Some you you obviously knew how to get to me now, so um, you know we'll stay in touch. Definitely. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. The thanks thank go you. to you. Bye. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. So long. Makes me hopeful and happy. And when you can, um, run for office too. And local level is really important too. Anyway, thanks guys. Love you. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, so long.